Hi there, this is part three of the robot rigging tutorial series. Last video we talked about how to create all of the joints for our character. This video we're going to talk about how to create the skinning, which is the process of attaching the geometry to the joints. So our goal here is to eventually export this to a game engine, and game engines will only accept incoming character animation if the geometry is skinned to the joints. It will not accept it if the geometry is just parented or grouped or any other method of, of hierarchy. Um, so skinning uh, is a deformer, and the deformer tells the geometry to move when a joint moves or rotates, or it tells the geometry to deform when multiple joints move and rotate. So we're going to stay in the rigging module, and we're going to use the bind skin options. I'm going to go skin, bind skin, and go to the box beside it. And what I'm going to do, if I reset this to show you the default settings, I want to, a lot of the robot pieces just need to rotate when a joint rotates because it's more rigid motion, robotic, mechanical type of motion. So most of the body parts are going to be skinned to just one joint. So I want to change in the bind skin options to bind skin to selected joints. Now for robotic skinning, I'm just going to use the classic um, skinning methods. There are other ones if you're doing more complex deforming based characters then we could use the geodesic voxel for bind method and dual quaternion or weight blended for skinning method but considering I just need to use uh, rigid motion rotation based motion for mechanical objects I'm just going to keep the default settings for those two but the key thing is to bind to selected joints. Alright so we're ready to start binding the skin. So I'm going to select the base pelvis geometry and shift select the base pelvis joint. Make sure I only have one joint selected to this piece of geometry and I'm going to click apply. Now as default because colorized skeleton is turned on, my skeleton is now colorized to different colors. That's just an option you can turn that off if you don't want to colorize the skeleton. But what I like about that is if a skeleton is colorized, that tells me that there's geometry skin to this skeleton somewhere. So it allows me to know if I have multiple skeletons, what skeletons are, um, are bound to geometry or not. All right, so the next part up, so basically what that means is if I select my pelvis and move that, the pelvis joint, the pelvis geometry moves with it. See that moving around with it. All right, uh, whenever I'm testing the motion, movement, or rotate of a joint, I'm always going to hit Control Z to go back to my default bind pose. That's really important. So whenever you're testing something, a joint, go back, hit uh, Control Z to go back to bind pose. All right, so my next objects are my cylindrical turn piece and my torso piece uh, and my shoulder joint holder on each side and my neck holder on the top. So all one, two, three, four, five of those pieces are going to get skinned to this spine joint. That's the rotational point for these body parts. So let's do apply. So I can skin multiple objects to one joint, but for rigid motion I want to make sure one piece of geometry is only skinned to one joint. So I'm not going to select multiple joints and skin one object to multiple joints right now. We'll come back and do the antenna that way. Alright, so let's work our way up. So basically we can test that again. We can go back to the pelvis and move that and those pieces will move. If I select the spine joint, I never want to kind of move a sub joint or a child joint like this. That's unnatural. So I always can move and rotate the pelvis joint, which is our root joint. But for any child joint, I just want to rotate them. So I can test out the rotate and see that it is moving or rotating those body parts. And I can undo that and then work my way up. So next part is for the neck. I'm going to select my neck ball and this neck piece and really the next ball above that because that doesn't really need to rotate. The head's going to rotate on top of that. And then shift select the neck joint and apply. Same settings as earlier. So if I rotate that you can see it's rotating those pieces. Okay. My head, my head um, base, I'm not, I don't have any joints for my eyes so I'm just going to go ahead and skin my eyes to this part as well and then my antenna base. All of those are going to get skinned to my head joint. Go ahead and do that. We'll come back to the um, antenna in a little bit, but let's go ahead and test our head. Looks pretty good except for the antenna. Alright, let's work our way to the arm. So the arm is going to have 
one, two, three pieces. And then those are going to get scanned to the shoulder. Okay. The forearm, this base piece for the elbow, and then the secondary base piece on the other side are going to get scanned to the elbow joint. And you can test this out as you go. Good. Test the elbow. All right, good. And work our way down to all the smaller pieces. So the ball for the wrist, the holders for the joints for the fingers are all going to get skinned to the wrist joint. These two pieces for that finger are going to get skinned to the base finger joint. And then we'll work our way around the other pieces. So this is you know, just tedious but not difficult work. I'm just going to skin the parts for that finger to the joint that should rotate it. So I'm going to repeat with all these other parts here. I'll show you one side, then I'll skip back and do the other side. Okay. Okay, we'll get the rest, last parts of the fingers here. There we go. But the idea is that every piece of geometry needs to be skinned to uh, a joint. So now if we go back and test the shoulder, that moves everything. The rotate pivots are still there, but that doesn't affect anything. Go to individual fingers, rotate them, looks pretty good. All right, so let's go do the leg. And then I'm gonna pause the video and skin the opposite leg the same way. All right, so if I move this, I don't have the helper piece or the holder. So that needs to be skinned to the pelvis. Okay. The ball we want to rotate with the joint, so we're going to select. Um, let's just deselect and show you there. Uh, this ball, both balls here, um, the knee and the, sh the hip ball, the cylindrical, cylindrical shape, and then the joint. So that way that joint moves all of those pieces. The lower leg, the knee holder, and the ankle holder are all going to get skinned to the knee joint. All right. Uh, the uh, ball, the foot, and foot holder are going to get skinned to the ankle joint, and nothing gets skinned to the other two joints there. All right. So we can go test that out. Pretty good. Try the knee. Pretty good. Try the ankle. Pretty good. All right. So I'm going to pause the video and skin the other side of the body, uh, and then we'll come back and do the antenna. All right. So now I have both legs and both arms uh, skinned properly. It's good to test to see uh, if things are working properly. So select the joints and rotate them okay, all the way around. We want to make sure all of our joints rotate as we want them to. Moves, moves the body as we want them to. Select the fingers, I can select the uh, wrist. Okay. One thing to note when skinning is the geometry now should never be moved or rotated uh, from any of the uh, vertices, edges, faces, or the object mode. Uh, so if I select a piece of geometry the translate rotates and scales are all locked, which means the motion should be controlled by another object, as in the joints. So once we scan, we don't want to adjust the geometry anymore. We want to be able to move, rotate, and scale the geometry based off of what the joints do. So if I come in here and move the pelvis, that should move everything but the antenna. So there we go. Let me hit undo. All right, so the last thing is the antenna, which is a little bit more complex, but still pretty self-explanatory and, and straightforward. And we want this antenna, the geometry for the antenna, to smoothly bend and twist and rotate uh, as if it was made out of like rubber or some kind of bendable material. So we're still going to use selected joints, but the difference this time is I'm going to select the base antenna form that has enough geometry to allow it to bend, so vertical loops going up the top. And then I'm going to shift select all of my joints that I want to skin this to. So it's like the base antenna, and I'll work my way up. Let's select all of these joints. There we go. So I want to make sure all of my antenna joints are selected and my antenna geometry. I don't want anything else selected. 
but I'm going to then go to uh, apply that bind skin. Now if I still rotate the base, it's going to rotate everything. But if I come in here and rotate one of these middle joints, if I look at my black antenna geometry, you see I was bending and twisting now. If I go up here further up, it will bend and twist it from that point of view. So this allows what's called smooth binding to drive the motion of this geometry. If I select like multiple joints, so select antenna 2, then all the way up to antenna 7, and rotate all of them, you can see it smoothly bends and twists all of that system there. So that's a pretty cool way to set up the structure of smooth bonding, deforming based geometry. All of my other joints in geometry are meant to just rigidly move, but my antenna is meant to smoothly deform that body. There's a little bit of an issue to begin with that we're going to correct, and that's called refining the skin weights. So with that base geometry, and the issue is when I'm rotating this joint, you see how that base section is twisting and it's not looking very rigid of a ball shape. So when I select this joint and rotate it, I don't want it to affect this bottom area. And we can refine that by adjusting the skin weights. So let's close the bind skin option. I'm going to select the geometry. I'm going to go to skin, paint skin weights, and the option box beside that. So the way geometry skins two joints is based off of a weight percentage. All right, so it's either zero or a hundred or somewhere in between that. If the weight of the skinning is zero for this specific joint, then it's going to have a black value. That means zero percent, this joint is not going to affect this vertex on the geometry at all, zero percent. If it's a hundred percent weight, that means this joint is going to 100% affect this vertex on the geometry. So with the geometry selected, it pulls up the paint skin weights tool and I have an antenna 1 selected and I can switch to look at the other ones, antenna 2, 3, 4, zoom all the way out, 5 and 6. So if I look at antenna 1, antenna 1 is 100% affecting some of these vertices down here. But as it blends up towards antenna joint 2, it's going to affect less and less area. So antenna 2 is affecting this area. We can actually see some light gray values on the baseball, which is why when I rotate the antenna 2 joint, it's slightly affecting this area down here. So really what I want to do is go to the antenna 1. If I zoom out, you can see there's a brush. If I hold down the B key and left click and drag, that changes the brush size. So I want to scale this down some. Maybe a little more. And I want to add paint operation. I'm always going to choose an add instead of replace. Paint operation add and a value of 1. That means 100%. That means it's going to paint on a white value so that only this joint will affect this bottom area. So I'm going to click and drag. You can see how it changed that value more. If I undo that. It's pretty white, but if I drag on it more, it is really going to fully make that area white. So I'm going to rotate this around and blend this so it affects all of that area. Try to drag select down here. What I might can do is take these two pieces of geometry and hide them and then come back into my skin waist just to make sure that I can paint all of these bottom areas so that that antenna joint 2 is no longer going to affect any of these areas. Okay. So I might want it to blend a little bit so let's see it's kind of I'll drag it and I'll paint on a little bit more like this other loop right there but then I'll allow it to be kind of gray above this there you go. that should be pretty good all right so now let's um let's un unhide everything else okay so painted skin weights is a value black and white value if you want to um, change the skin weights I always add so I'm not removing skin weights I'm not painting on a value of black or zero I'm gonna instead go to the right joint and add more value to that joint that's an important step as well so now let's go back to joint 2 and rotate that and you can see it is it's affecting still a little bit too much down there but it's not affecting as much of the ball so it's affecting too much and to reiterate what I was saying a minute ago I don't want to go into antenna 2 and with a value of 0 
remove that white or gray value away. That's not going to work properly. Instead, let's put a value of 1 and go back to antenna 1 and paint this value of 1 back on these vertices on antenna 1. So I'm always going to add weight to the proper joint instead of remove weight from the improper joint. That's going to be really important. So now let's go back out, go to antenna 2. There you go. That's looking a lot better. It's not moving that ball shape at all now. So then now when I go antenna 2 and I'm going to shift select or control select in the outliner, all of the rest of the antenna joints except for antenna 1. And then now that moves that shape naturally here. So I can kind of rotate and I can curl. You can see how it can kind of in an interesting way kind of twist on itself. Undo that. So that's what's called smooth binding. Smooth binding typically requires that you adjust the skin weights. It's going to do a pretty good job by itself, but it's going to also require you sometimes to go back and adjust the skin weights. Remember with skin weighting, you select the geometry, and we're always going to add, and make sure we add it to the right joint. I'm never going to remove weight with a value of zero. I'm always going to add weight with a positive value to the correct joint. All right, so that's the entire body with skin weighting. I can test this out. I can select my pelvis and move it around. If that moves everything, uh, we are good to go. If it doesn't move something, that means we did not skin that part of the body correctly. So to wrap up this video on how to apply skin to the joints uh, attached to the geometry moves when the joints move, the next video we'll come back and we'll talk about how to create control so that we can easily animate this character. And then we'll come back and animate the character uh, in a couple of different ways, a couple of different cycles.